Hi everyone, in today's video we're going to review the Nikon Z5. I bought this back in August uh, 2022, so I had this for nearly a year and a half, just under a year and a half, and I've taken thousands of photos with this, and I think it's probably about time that I did a review on it, uh, to show you all kind of what my thoughts are with this. Originally I had the Nikon D3200 as my first ever camera lens. I bought that back in 2013. Um, and then it got to last last year when I was in the Valley of Fire and I was taking some photos on that and I just started to feel like the quality was just starting to go. You know, I had it for a long time. It's getting a little bit older now and I wanted to venture into mirrorless cameras. So I went for the decision of what to do. I looked at all the Canons, I looked at the Sonys, the Nikons, I looked at the Fujis. There's so much to choose, and I think from the lessons I've learned and my takeaways, I don't think there's much between them. These day and age, with the technology the way that it is, it doesn't matter what brand you go for at the end of the day. I think it's just down to personal preference. For me, when I uh, tested some of the others, I went quite a lot for Sony. I did nearly get the Sony system, purely because of the range of lenses and the flexibility, and you know a lot of people seem to be using that for the, the video side of things. I wasn't kind of into the video as much as I am now, um, but I don't regret my decision with the Nikon. The main reason I went for the Nikon is because I had a Nikon before, I knew the menus, I, I knew how to use the camera. Kind of gave me a bit of an advantage straight away, I didn't have to go through and really learn all that again. And also for me, the grip, I really like the bigger grip, like the way it feels in my hands. So that kind of what sold it for me. It wasn't until I actually got hands on with the camera that I thought, Do you know what, it's, it's the one for me. I just really like how it feels. Um, yes, I could have used them out for my lenses. I'll be honest, I didn't really have the best selection of lenses beforehand. Uh, so for me, that wasn't really a consideration. But for other people, if you do have a lot of lenses on, um, you know, some of the non mirrorless systems, you can obviously use those over and that might influence your decision more. Anyway, on to the camera itself. So really good quality, really good entry level as well. Uh, camera for this, that's how they class it as an entry level uh, mirrorless camera. I paid £1,600 for this when I bought this and it came with the 24 to 50 uh, pancake lens on there as, as a kit lens. And that was really good. Uh, the reason I went for this one over, say, the Z6 Mark II or the Z7 Mark II was purely price. I had a budget of £2,500. But that was kind of my overall budget I wanted to spend on that. It's, it's a lot of money. But I enjoyed my photography, it was one of my hobbies, and I thought, you know what, it's about time uh, for an upgrade. So, yeah, I went for this uh, £1,600, and I explained some of the reasons for that. But I then also got the 24 to 200mm lens. I've already done a review on this, so watch that for a more in-depth view on this lens in particular. But together, that was working out at my budget at £2,500. That was the perfect combination for me. It got me into the mirrorless world, it got me into the full frame world as well and got me got me out and taking photos i do a lot of hiking and a lot of traveling and actually having one camera and one lens at the time with a huge focal length ability was just amazing kept weight down took loads of photos it was really good i'm going to do a little one about the 24 to 120 lens i've been using over the last month in another video which is what i've got in this one now so this one's 24 megapixels I know some people really obsess about the megapixels and the more is better. And yeah, the more is better, but I find that there's other ways around using that. And, you know, for example, focus stacking really helps with that. It kind of helps bring up the megapixels. And it depends how big you're printing as well. You know, this is a uh, A4 size print, for example. You wouldn't notice any difference on that. I've got uh, a huge A1 in the bedroom. You wouldn't notice at all in terms of the size of that. It blows up really well. I've not had any problems with this so far. Some of the other benefits of using this camera are the inbuilt image stabilization, which has been really helpful, especially with some of the lenses I had, didn't necessarily have that on board. The other thing as well is just the weather ceiling around this. I've had, I've taken a few photos, uh, actually quite a few photos now in very wet conditions. I don't have to worry about this. If you're changing lenses, yes, you, you obviously have to worry about that and be careful about that and make sure you're cleaning it more regularly. But most of the time, I'll sort it out in the car beforehand, know roughly what I'm going to take. 
and then go out and do that and then find shelter if I'm going to change and, and try and keep it there. But the weather seeing is really good on this. The only problem I ever had was when I was in Dartmoor and it got to the point where it was so wet and I had a, a very cheap uh, rain hood. This, this one here. It's not particularly good, but it covered the camera. What I actually found is that I got into a situation where a bit of water got onto the viewfinder and where it automatically switched I couldn't see out the viewfinder because it thought it was on the LCD and vice versa so I actually couldn't see what I was shooting so I yeah I was a bit stuck so I was still shooting because um, I had my settings dialed at that point thankfully and I got back to the, the apartment and then we, I cleaned it all up and it was fine again basically it was just getting a bit confused I know you can set it in the menus beforehand, but there's not much you can really do when both the screen and the camera aren't working at the same time. But that was more in extreme conditions, so I, I don't think you'd ever have a problem with that. Some of the cons around this, I would say, is the frames per second. So it does 4.5 frames per second. Hasn't been a problem for me because I did a lot of landscape stuff. When I've started to do portraits for, say, um, kids, when they're running around, you know, you want to get those in motion shots, you know, to tell the story. I find it sometimes struggles a little bit. I wish it just had a little bit more frames per second. And for stuff like birds and other wildlife stuff, that can also be quite challenging. It's okay. I think once you've got your settings not uh, dialed in, it's not the end of the world. I think it's fine, with, especially for an entry level camera. For a hobbyist or somebody that wants to get into this more professionally, I still think it's a great entry level. So although they're cons, I don't think they're cons enough to not warrant that. Especially if you want to do what I did and go for more an entry level camera but spend more money on lenses. That for me was the biggest uh, learning for me is that you don't need to have the most powerful camera, the most powerful megapixels. You need to just make sure and invest in your lens quality and make sure you've got good lenses. So what I'm going to do now is show you some photos of what I've taken on this camera, where I've been, um, just so you can have a comparison and see for yourself in terms of what, what you think in terms of details. <laughs> The 24 to 120 is a brilliant lens, and honestly, it's just leveled up this camera. The I was getting a bit of blurring in the corners. I used a couple of review websites. I understood what the spec was and what I need to get out of this lens. So I've been shooting between f a, you know, lower down f stops like 5.6, and I've been shooting higher as well, more f 13. I typically shoot in the f 8 to f 13 range. I have gone to F16, not a problem, this handles it well. The ISO and nighttime stuff is where it becomes a little bit more challenging. Nikon are known for their nighttime capabilities and it's really good. I just think that you just got to be very careful. So one of the settings I put on this was raising my maximum ISO. Now, I will put in the description below what the max ISO I've got it set at now. So I know that I've got that flexibility, especially when I'm shooting manual and I'm changing it around or I'm shooting aperture priority. I don't want it to automatically boost up my ISO to compensate above a certain point where I know it starts to get a bit too grainy and I can't control it. In the screen itself, which is obviously, I haven't spoke too much about. It's a pullout screen. You've got various different angles on it. It's great when you're shooting high. Uh, you can also shoot down low and get the flexibility. It doesn't pop out the sides. A little bit annoying when you, I've got male bracket on and I'm trying to shoot, but at the same time, I mean, I'll just, bend down a little bit or get into those angles. I, I don't find that much of an issue, but to that. You can see, very clear. I've got the grid lines and histogram set up. You've got lots of different options in terms of how you want to display on the screen, how you look through it. And then you've got, what I really like is the, the quick menus. So you can kind of set up what you want to do really quickly for your photos. So when you're out and about and you want to Quick, quickly change something. So let's say I want to change the focus shooting to do some focus, um, focus stacking there straight away. If I want to change the focus, I can change the focus area from single point to wide, ultra wide, so on. And I can also change the focus mode from single to continuous or manual focus. Straight there, job done. Quick, quick as anything. 
Zoom in function as well if you want to zoom in on uh, something when you're looking. Really good for whenever doing some astro stuff and getting into that. All in all though, I think really good. The autofocus, fantastic on this. And the settings as well. So you've got the U1, U2, U3 that you can set up for customs. So I tend to do U1 for uh, landscape photography handheld. So I've got different settings on there. And then U2 I'll do for tripod based. So a little a few changes around image stabilization. U3 is my kind of default portrait. So if I want to quickly get into that and get some quick snaps before having to go through all the kind of manual settings, I can use that. The other thing to note is it's touchscreen focus. So if I was to tap down there, I can focus and take a shot or I can change it to um, just tap to, oh, nothing. Or I can have it to focus, but not actually take the photo. So it's nice to have those options really quickly to see how, how you want to do that. Battery life on this has been fantastic. I actually haven't charged this for over a week and I've done um, some macro photography, some woodland stuff, and I'm still halfway through as well. Uh, and a few videos as well. So battery life is really good. The other thing I haven't commented about, which was also a really good selling point for me, is the card slots. Just make sure that's in there. So you've got two card slots in this one. I have it, so I've got the, the one as the main and the second as the backup. Fantastic for those those times if you think you're gonna lose it. For example, going to Iceland, I didn't really worry too much about my cards failing because I've got a backup. Perfect. The other benefit to that, which has happened on a very few occasions, but it's saved my life, is that if you look now, I don't actually have a uh, card in my slot number one because it's plugged into my computer. If I was to go take some shots now, I'll, go, I'll be out there and go, oh, I forgot my SD card. <laughs> good backup. Not saying it's the, the reason to go buy this camera, but it's just a really good option uh, and a nice to have for that. Hopefully SD cards never fail, but they do. I think that's it in terms of the camera itself and taking photos and the settings. The only other thing to talk about is the video quality. I've started to do more videos now, more of seascapes, more of wildlife, many schools at the moment. Actually, I've been really impressed. I think I need to dial my settings in a little bit more for the kind of post-processing afterwards and get there, but quality is really really good i did a commercial shoot not so long ago uh you know somebody doing some car detailing i compared that to my iphone i got the new, the new iphone the 15 compared to this this still hands down was a million times better and i, I was very surprised i got really good quality from the iphone but this was still out of this world i did shoot between some manual and some auto just because i'm still trying to figure out the perfect settings for different scenarios both are incredible, like really, really good. So I think if you want to do video for this as well, have the options for that, let's do that. Um, what I will say is I'm going to be doing more vlogging or more videos like this with this camera set up, not using my phone to record. And I, I can't wait to just take this out, have this on the tripod, be out there. When I get a, uh, a Lavendale mic, I'll make all this perfect um, for that. The other thing to get yourself invested in is an L bracket. Get yourself a nice L bracket. This one I've got, which I'll put a link in the description. I've got off Amazon. I think it was £30, but it's super lightweight. I had a real heavy one before, and it just does weigh the camera down quite a lot. Makes all the difference. And then I've got my peak design clips as well. I've not really used the function buttons on the front, the two there. I know a lot of people do set them up for your preferences. I don't feel like I need to. I'm not that professional enough yet where I'm in the, in the out and about and I need to take quick snaps, I have quick settings. You know, I'm taking my time, I'm thinking through stuff, I wanna get the right composure. I'm not just quickly snapping away. Um, so I can't really give too much about that. It seemed to work well. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will finish with some other photos for you to have a little look at. Final conclusion on this is buy it. If, if you are limited on a budget, invest in your lenses, go for this, you won't regret it. I might go for the Z7 Mark II just before the, uh, the double the megapixels later on. Um, purely because I'm starting to blow up my pictures quite a lot when I don't want to always photo stack. 
Now the prices are coming down, you can pick them up second hand for under £2,000, which is really good. Um, that's purely because the Z8 and the Z9 have come out. If you're not too worried about that and you want something new, you don't want something used, definitely get this. Or the, the Z6, Mark, Z6 Mark II. I think but you can't go really wrong with those. Um, but definitely get yourself the lens and definitely focus on what lens you want first. That would be my suggestion. So that's my conclusion. Hope you enjoyed and I will see you again soon.